Hi everyone, welcome to this video and in this video we are going to compare our model performance on different type of data sets and including the ones we have did earlier and we are going to see how does changing the number of hidden units affects our results, right? So let's get started. Yeah, so I have created one function which is load data set and I'm making four type of data sets here. One is your make moons. And this is the same data set we used in perceptron learning algorithm. Make circles you have already seen. Make classification is uh, you you can use this method as well, right? To generate classification data. And we will see what this data set looks like. And this is your ZOR data set which we discussed in the last video, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to train my model on all the four data sets. And we will see how does changing the hidden number of units is going to affect my uh, output, right? So we have these four data sets and now what I, what I'm doing is I'm going to do some visualization, right? So for D in data sets, I can uh, get, I can create one model for every data set neural network. Let's say input size is two because every data set has two features and let's say the number of layers, number of hidden units is four and three earlier it was 10 and five. But now say, now let us say we have four units in the first layer and three units in the second layer and output size is equal to two right? and I'm going to load a data set. So X comma Y equals to load data set. And here I give the name of the data set D. Right. Or here and here I check which data set I want to load. Right. Okay. So after that, I need to uh, generate all the outputs from the model. Oh, before that we need to train our model. So let us call the train method. We give X, Y model. Let's say we train the model for 500 epochs and learning rate is 0 0.001 and or uh, let's do it for let's say 1000 epochs and logs we do not want right so let's say logs equal to false right and model dot predict x right so we give our input data and then we get our training accuracy that that is given by np dot sum outputs equal to equal to y divided by y dot shape zero and let us print training accuracy for each of the data sets and now let us also draw the graph right so plot dot uh, title and here we give what data set we want to have so data set name is d and plot decision boundary right plot decision boundary and here we give lambda x which belongs to your input data x and here you give x and y and plot dot show okay so for ZOR data set you can see training accuracy is 100% for classification data set you can see the training accuracy is quite good and it is 96% right and for moons data set training accuracy is also good it is almost 97% which was around 60% in case of a linear classifier such as perceptron and in uh, in case of circles data set it is 96.40 right maybe you can uh, change the model architecture you can say i want to have uh, eight neurons here and four neurons here you will see there there would be very uh, different types of results right okay now you can see the decision surface is changing right? and for the ZOR data set, the variation is more because there are very less training examples from which model can learn. So it, it, it does not know what an appropriate boundary should be, but it is able to give your 100% accuracy by minimizing the loss. For other data sets, the results are quite similar and for some the accuracy, there is some change in accuracy as well, right? So what you, what you can do is you can just uh, try and play with these neurons and get those results right so another interesting uh, place to uh, play with um, such experiments is your google 
TensorFlow Playground, right? So you can also use TensorFlow uh, Playground for working on such dummy data sets. Right? But in the next example, we are going to apply the same network that we have uh, built for uh, Pokemon classification, right? So I hope uh, you would have now uh, learned how to build neural networks from scratch and i will see you guys in the next video where we, we are going to start building our pokemon classifier thanks a lot